Hey, welcome to the second tutorial, the follow along tutorial on um, color match. Now, just to be clear, color match is a feature only in version 080 and beyond. Currently, 080 is only available to commercial backers in beta. If you would like to upgrade to commercial, you can do that um, with the coupon code PU upgrade at checkout. Use the same email address and then you can just upgrade for currently $27 US to limited commercial that will get you access to the beta or eventually in a month or two the beta will be completed and you'll get access to it for free you just need to be a little bit patient um, i still commit to um, all features that end up in that are in the beta or commercial for a short period of time will end up in the final version assuming they stay in the beta some features in the beta may get removed because they're just no good or not useful so with that out of the way let's start looking at how to add a third color now a third color seems easy, and in some ways, in many ways, it is. You just add a third color. However, you do have to think about where you want that color to be. So I'm gonna just add one color to our ball. Now, first of all, you'll notice that our ball is not exactly the same ball. It doesn't just have green stripes added to it. It's a different angle, it's a different color. So we're gonna take away some of our special cases that we had here for the old ball. Oops. Okay, and then we're gonna switch over to the mesh core so we can actually see things the way they are. And what we're looking at here is the same thing we had before, but you'll see these equal marks here. These equal marks, you can, there's some down here, I can show you those. Those are new uh, from the last um, uh, video, but they are in the current beta. And those are what I call saturation marks. Saturation marks indicate that this color is basically the same as the color below it. There is a little bit of threshold, so it doesn't have to be 100% the same, but it's very, very close, basically imperceptibly close. And of course, if it is 100% the same, it will show. So generally speaking, when you see saturation marks, that means that you don't want to go any higher than that. And in fact, Hueforge won't pick a spot higher than that unless you specifically tell it to. So here we are, we have our ball. Now we have a few issues with our ball. The biggest issue with our ball right now is that this dark red area isn't very dark red and we have some blue bleeding into it. So the first thing we'll do is we will just find a close filament to this. And I know which one I want to use. The Paramount Iron Red. It's a great filament for this. We'll drop it in here. That lets us make that dark. And because we just used a real filament, we can just click and drag it over here. Now, the next thing we might want to look at is the fact that this blue up here is pretty red. Uh, but really, and you can see here, it's picking that spot there. But really, it's kind of a gray if you look at it. So the easiest place to put a gray is probably down here in our stack. But we really want that to be a higher TD. Now, Whenever you're hovering over one of these, you can hold down T, it'll change to TD mode. And then with the mouse wheel, you can change the TD. And I think um, a three, we have a, a, a three TD gray, not exactly the same color, but pretty close in the uh, chromatal gray. So we can switch to that. And then we can kind of adjust how we want this to look until it's about right. And that cleans up a lot of this. These are much, much better now. So now that we've cleaned up the base ball, the base of the ball, we want to look at the green and where do we want the green to go? Well, I think we want the green to go on top and that's really what you need to think about. That is actually the hard part, right? I can put green anywhere in this mesh core. I grab this green, right? And I drop it right here. Those stripes are going to turn green, but it's going to mess with the shading of everything else. So while you can put the green anywhere, you need to think about where it makes sense to go, both in terms of how you're going to blend from layer to layer, but also how you're going to um, get a smooth and consistent look and how it's going to be consistent to the image itself. So if something is in the foreground of the image, you might want to try to put that in the top. And if something's in the background of the image, you want to try to put it on the bottom. There are of course going to be times you'll change that either for artistic license or because it's just that they blend so well together, um, even though one's in the foreground and one's in the background that you want to blend them together. And then maybe something in mid ground is going to be on, on top of those just because the way that they blend nicely together. So in this case, though, it seems pretty obvious to put the green at the top. Now, my whole area got white or got weird colored. Why is that? Because really this blue, this white needs to come down below. Um, so the nice thing here is we actually have a white edge in the image here. There's a white edge under here, which is actually great for us because normally we don't like that white edge on the side of the mesh. But here, that's great for us. So I'm going to get a lower TD white. The ivory white's a good choice for this. Bring that in here. I'm going to replace all my whites with this white. So just control click, remember, get you there. Replace them all for right now. You see how all the saturation marks showed up there? That's because 
we're saturating much earlier because this is a lower TD color. That's what you should expect to see. A lower TD color will saturate more, more readily. Now, one of the things I'll tell you is that greens are notoriously difficult to match. It's very, very hard to match green colors, partially because we perceptually see them as green when they're yellow and browns, but depending on the surrounding colors, but also just for some reason, greens are very, very hard to match. So I often match greens out of the image. Now this may be too close to black, but it looks like it works, okay. So there, we've got our greens to match pretty much here. Now, you'll see that we have um, our greens matching pretty well. They're not perfect. We have a little bit of splotchiness here, but generally pretty good. That's a, that's a matter of, you know, picking the right exact color shade. Um, but we also have these little splotches here. Now, these are these brownish patches. And brownish patches are kind of annoying because they don't really belong here. I grabbed the wrong color. There, they don't really belong up here in the green, but we could put them here. They belong more down in the red, so I'm going to see about dropping one like right here in the red. Um, kind of mucks with my red too much. Let's see if I bring it down here. How does that look? I think that looks okay. It doesn't look great, but it looks okay, so we're going to play with that for now. We'll just put it down here. Um, so now we have our mesh core built pretty much correctly. Now, one thing that's also changed since that last video is that the mesh core defines the overall height, the overall mesh height. So you see if I bring the mesh core up, it go, the actual depth goes to 2.24. If I bring the mesh core down, it goes to 2.04. Previously, in the previous build, you had to bring both fighters down or both fighters up to, make the, to adjust the height, but now you only need to adjust the mesh core, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Okay, so we now have um, our ball mostly, mostly drawn. Um, in order to match things up a little bit, let's flip it over, it's not gonna look right right? The, the, this part's all white. That's because all this stuff is in this area that's white. Let's just start by bringing this down. It won't change anything for now. And then um, we also have this issue here where we have this, this gray here. Um, I did say it was a 3TD gray, but I think maybe that's a little bit too strong. This is a lighter color. So I'm going to bring in the 8TD the gray and use that. And that looks pretty good. So we'll leave that be. And then we already have the iron red here. So really we just need to deal with the green. And I happen to know that the bamboo pine green is a good dark low TD green. That's gonna be along the same lines as this green. Now I don't have a good green that is this similar to this color. Um, that's a little bit harder to find. Uh, most of the greens tend to be either bright or not bright. And there's not a lot of, of variation. There's not a lot of mediums, but let's try this overture green here and see if we like what that looks like. I think that's pretty reasonable. Not perfect. Um, ideally, I'd have a slightly darker, you know, this mistletoe green looks about, looks is very similar. Um, I mean, if we just look at our greens that are options, they're also similar. This jungle green might be a good option though, actually. That is actually looking okay, especially if I think if I put a white on top of it to put the same ivory white on top of it. I think that's, that's serviceable. Um, obviously, you can tweak this. You can get the green the way you want. You can decide it's not green. You can decide that this should be bright blue, and that's fine. You just put in your blues. Um, if we decide that this is bright blue, and we want to put in, like, or, or it's a blue, we want to put in this stone blue and cyan blue, and then we can have this light blue striper on the ball. Remember, you're not actually limited to the color that's on the mesh core. That's the nice thing here. We can choose whatever color we want here, but we can work from the mesh core to decide how it works. So just, just a little thing to throw out there. Okay, so this is how you think about and you work at adding a third color. And I, this is where you're going to have the most trouble. The most trouble is going to be adding more colors when you aren't used to how they blend together and how to stack them. And you aren't used to blending up and blending down. Um, that's going to be the toughest part. And that's the thing that's just going to take practice and experience where you're going to work on a, an image and say, I can't get this one to work. I can get half of it to work, but not the other half, or I can get everything but one color to work. Like it'll show that color, but I get weird edges and it uh, dips in and out and it doesn't look good. Um, and then you go to another image and, and do some more practice and you'll find eventually that, oh, that's how you do that. I know how to do that. Okay. I remember I learned this lesson on this one image and now I'm doing it this other way. So just don't get don't get discouraged by that. I think you'll find that by and large, let's put this back to the green. By and large, um, 
as long as you take it slowly and you think about why you're putting um, colors where you're putting them, you'll have good success going forward with your color match. Hope this helps, and uh, I'll, come, I'll be back. Uh, probably it's going to be a week or so before I'm back, uh, but I'll be back with more videos and more details and smoother color gradients and more detailed images. So keep your eye out for that. See you soon.